Hey friends, welcome back to another video. So in a previous video, I talked about my winter TBR slash pile of possibilities. These are the books that I hope to read in the months of December, January, February, maybe March. They evoke the wintry feels, but in this video, I'm gonna have my winter recommendations. I don't make recommendation videos too often, but all the books that I mentioned today are all books that I have loved for the most part, and I think I read them in the winter time or when I was reading them, it gave off a wintry feel. So let's just get into the book recommendations, and I'm gonna start with thrillers. I don't read too many mystery thrillers these days, but I dabble here and there, and all three of these reads I really love. I'm going to start with the most obvious, the most popular one that I think everyone mentions for these recommendation videos, and that is No Exit by Taylor Adams. This was a wild ride of a book and I absolutely loved it. It is an isolated thriller and this falls a young college girl who gets stuck in a snowstorm and has to pull off on a rest exit and she notices that one of the vans in the parking lot has a child inside and there's only four other people in the rest stop. There is no service, there is no help coming and she has to figure out how am I gonna save this child? Who is the bad guy? What's gonna go down? How do I stay safe? How do I get help? The snow is also a very important factor and like an atmospheric element that just brings so much to the story. If you have not read this for whatever reason, do yourself a favor, pick it up. It is crazy. Another very highly suspenseful thriller that I just finished in the month of November, and that is Three Hours by Rosamund Lupton. This was a book that was on my TBR for a while. It is not released in the US, I believe, and that's why I just couldn't get my hands on it. I'm so glad that I finally got to this one. This was another wild ride. This follows a school shooting that happens in a small uh, town in the UK, and this was just so brilliantly written. Unlike any thriller that I've read before, it is very high stakes, intense, but even even though the plot is so snappy, there is no lack of character development in here. It is packed full of perspectives, but they are so well developed even though it's a short read. I don't know how this author did it, but it was brilliant. And the school shooting happens in the midst of a blizzard. So the snow is definitely a factor here. This is definitely the kind of book that you read in one sitting when it's snowing outside and you have a whole afternoon. It covers a lot of heavy topics and trauma, but it is a fantastic thriller. And then another one that's maybe less thrilling and fast paced, but it's still very suspenseful and mysterious is The Life We Bury by Ellen Eskins. This is now a series that I really want to dive into more of, but I really enjoyed this read. It follows a young college student who is writing an assignment where he has to go to a nursing home and write the life story of someone in that nursing home. And he discovered an old man on his deathbed who was a war veteran and just so happens to be convicted of murdering a young girl in that town. And so as he's uncovering this life story, he's realizing some things are not adding up and he thinks that maybe someone else committed the crime and so he has to jump in and uncover this mystery as well as dealing with a lot of personal stuff going on in his family life and I just thought it was so well done. Next let me mention a classic book that it's just the perfect time of year to read this, especially in December, especially around Christmas. Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. I read this last year in December and it made its way to my favorite reads of the year, but also just was the perfect time of year to read this. This book covers many years, but there's a lot of Christmases that are highlighted in this book, so it feels like the the time of year to read. This is a story of sisterhood and friendship and family and love and forgiveness and just beautiful wholesomeness. I absolutely loved it and if you haven't read it for whatever reason, do yourself a favor, pick it up. It's the perfect time of year to read it. Before I end with my historical fiction recommendations, I have a couple poetry things to mention. The first one is this book called Winter Bees and Other Poems of the Cold by Joyce Sidman and Rick Allen. This was a picture book that I picked up for a bee-themed video I did earlier this year and it was my favorite book of that video and I read I think 12 books that had to do with bees. This one isn't even explicitly about bees, it's just poems of the cold. And even though it's a picture book, it could be really for anyone. I absolutely love this, the illustrations are beautiful and it just, again, is a perfect book to read in a sitting when it's snowy outside and it's cold. It's full of wonderful nature writing and just very seasonal. So I would highly recommend. Another standout poetry collection for me and a book that I absolutely loved, I guess I'm getting ahead of myself talking about some of my favorite reads from 2022, but The Lost Spells by Robert McFarlane and Jackie Morris is another stunning poetry collection. And this one isn't explicitly about winter or winter animals. It has all kinds of lovely drawings and I just so happened to pick the one with the snow bunny. It's full of beautiful illustrations and poetry. Again, just feels like 
a seasonal read. It could be read in any season, but it also evokes that coziness, wholesomeness, cuddling up on a cold wintry day. And finally, let's talk about historical fiction. I have a middle grade, technically historical fantasy recommendation, and that is Sleep, the story of a girl and her monster by Jonathan Oxier. This is one that is highly recommended by many people already, so I'm sure you know or have heard about it, but it is a sweet and wholesome story set in Victorian England about a young girl and her friend who is a chimney monster. She's a chimney sweep. It had that cozy, wholesome atmosphere, and there are depictions of someone being really cold, and for the most part, people use their fireplaces and chimneys in the winters when it's cold, so it just feels like the perfect time of year to pick a book like this up. Another really great historical fiction that has to do with the Alaskan wilderness in the wintertime is The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna, and this one's more of a coming-of-age story about a young girl in Alaska with a dysfunctional family, an abusive father, and the people that live in this tiny town. But there is elements and depictions of survival and braving the cold and snow in this book. And although maybe the cover screams fall, winter is really a perfect time of year to pick a book like this up. My last three recommendations all have to do with the Soviet Union or Russia, Eastern Europe, because it's just snowy and cold there. And when you think of Russia, you think winter time. <laughs> The first book I want to mention is The Nesting Dolls, and this was a lovely multi-generational family story following three generations of women. There is a perspective from a woman who is sent to a labor camp in Siberia, another one that lives in Odessa with her family under the Soviet regime, and then finally a young girl in Brighton Beach, New York that has to reconcile with her immigrant family and her mother's and grandmother's pasts. This book was not an easy read, and it covers a lot of hardship and trauma as well, but I thought it was really well done, and particularly the story set in Siberia in the labor camp. It's always absolutely cold and miserable and devastating, so definitely a wintry read. Speaking of a Soviet cold, dreary, miserable labor camp, my next recommendation is Between Shades of Grey by Ruta Sepetis. This follows a young Lithuanian girl who is sent with her mother and brother to a labor camp, and ultimately it's a story of survival and getting through the war and miserable, horrible conditions. I actually have the graphic novel adaptation as well. This is a short read, a condensed read of the original story, but both are absolutely lovely. Ruta Spennings is a favorite author. She does no wrong. Now this last book I recently mentioned in my top 10 historical fictions. I don't know why, I just, I love this book so much that it also has to do with cold Soviet Russia amidst the war, German occupation. City of Thieves by David Benioff is the book. It is a short read. It is a devastating read. It's a beautiful read of friendship. It is not for everyone. It's full of content that is not for everyone, but I absolutely love it. And it is also a story of survival. The snow, the atmosphere, the harshness of winter plays such a role in this book. So would highly recommend if you haven't picked it up yet. So those are my current winter recommendations. Again, if you haven't watched my winter TBR, I hope a lot of those are amazing reads. And then I'll be able to add a lot more books to my winter recommendations list. If you have any recommendations for me, please let me know down below. Any books that feel right to read during the season or evoke that cold, snowy atmosphere it is not my favorite season at all. I'm a summer girl, but I do love to read seasonally. And because I'm very cold and in perpetual sweater season, I am so down for any wintry reads. So please leave your recommendations down below. And thank you so much for watching today and tuning in. And I will see you guys in another video soon. Bye.